The Catholic Church blasting President Obama's modification to the contraception mandate for religious employees. Employers, I should say. They say it still forces them to violate their conscience. But yesterday, White House Chief of Staff Jack Lew defended the change. I think that this concern is one that people can disagree you know, it, 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 on the margins about, but we have addressed the core issue. No institution that has uh, a nonprofit institution that has religious principles that we violated has to pay for or directly offer these services. But women have access to the kinds of care that they're entitled to. We think that's the right approach. And insurance companies will pick up the tab, according to their plan. Now attorneys general from 12 states have sent a letter to secretaries uh, Kathleen Sebelius and Timothy Geithner and Hilda Solis saying, uh, well, they've had it, they're not going to abide by it, and they don't want to deal with it. We are joined right now by one of the co-authors of that letter, South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson. Attorney General, why wasn't this the solution you're looking for? Well, Brian, there's a number of reasons, the first of which many of these Catholic colleges, Baptist hospitals, other faith-based entities are uh, self-insurers. They're so big, they don't use insurance companies. They might use an insurance company to process or administer the claims, but they themselves pay for the services. So this uh, uh, alleged compromise or accommodation is, is a red herring. It doesn't exist. They actually still provide the services that they find unconscionable. And by the way, they're asking insurance companies, they said they'll be able to pick this up for people that want uh, contraceptive uh, uh, devices, they can pick it up for free of charge. How does that work out? How does that math add up? Well, what I said the other night was is that the Obama administration should have a lesson in economics 101 because any D student in economics can tell you that there are no free lunches. Uh, when you mandate that an insurance company uh, give away a free product or anybody give away f a free pot product, in other words, if I were to tell McDonald's you have to give people on the street free hamburgers, they're going to raise the price and the cost of how they do that. They're going to have to right. compensate for that. The same is true for the insurance companies. So there, no, nothing is actually right. free. And the actual entities, the faith-based entities, colleges, et cetera, will ultimately bear the costs of the very services that the administration claims they don't have to pay for. Alan, these top-down mandates are just the beginning. That's really what Obamacare is going to be weaving in over the next few years unless the Supreme Court stops it, correct? Oh, absolutely. I was on the phone the other night with uh, Nebraska Attorney General John Bruning, who was the original co-sponsor of the letter, and that was the very point that he made. And we agreed that, you know, at first you have uh, an administration mandating individuals enter into a private contract to buy. Then it was uh, that faith-based employers or employers who just don't who have a, uh, have a personal belief against these contraceptive uh, services, uh, requiring them to buy those services. And now you're requiring and mandating insurance companies give away a product for free. So this this is just a very slippery slope uh, that we've got to stand up now and fight. So you wrote the letter and you're on with us today getting the word out. Uh, South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay.